Hello my friends! We are back at one of my favorite beaches in Scotland. This is Cullen Beach. I've taken you here many times before. Today we're going to be painting a two-page spread of this beach, but mostly focusing on the reflected colors in the sand and just all the beautiful summer colors in front of me. I'll be talking my way through the painting, so feel free to grab a drink and snack and hang out with me, maybe work on something in, of your own. And if you are working on something of your own, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy. So the first thing I do when I sit down to paint a seascape is look at the difference in blues. So the temperature of the blue, the sky versus the water versus the shoreline versus any of the reflections. And what I find really helpful is if you just quickly lay in your lightest blue values so I laid in the sky color, I laid in the reflections a bit, which I, um, I'll actually do again later after I do the sand. Uh, but now I'm gonna mix this, this ocean color and the ocean is really, really dark compared to the sky. And when I squint my eyes at it, it's actually one of the darkest values. There's a, there's a few darker values in the shadows of the rocks, but it's gonna be really, really dark. And by mixing the ocean darker, it's going to make all the other elements feel brighter. <laughs> so it's kind of a fun thing to get that in right away because you already um, capture that sense of light. So I'm using my Delft blue and black to start off. And I'll just kind of lay that in and see how it looks. It may dry too light or it may dry too dark, but just getting it on the paper and seeing where I'm at. But yeah, if I, if I start with more of a neutral blue, I can come back in and add my more vibrant blues and even my turquoise colors near the waves because as the light falls into those waves, they are uh, pretty much turquoise and greenish towards the, the shore. So I'm just, I like starting with the neutrals and then laying in those brighter tones. Okay, now that I have that neutral blue, I'm gonna slowly start laying in some brighter tones. So I'll start with my dry brush with the darker turquoise tones. And the reason I like doing the dry brush over the darker water is because it automatically layers that color and it won't dry like totally solid. I can come back in and overlay some blue if I go a little bit too high with that turquoise, which I did. It's really challenging in such a skinny space. <laughs> uh, and I now need to choose where my waves are gonna be. And when I do the waves, I usually only, I try to uh, make them a little more prominent in specific areas not the in I don't want the entire thing to just be like one giant wave uh, I also need to add a bit of sky reflection on the water which is gonna be dry brush so I'll get some white and a bit of blue and I will tilt my paper so that my brush is almost horizontal and just kind of like streak it across in long horizontal brush strokes like that. It's the easiest way I know how to get really thin waves. Uh, I might even switch to my smaller brush and since it's not wet yet I'll just pick up a bit of that color maybe a tiny bit of water to activate it um, but dry it off a little bit and dust it over wherever I can gently because uh, like I don't want to cover everything I just did if I do that it's like it loses some of that magic so just a little bit here and there and then once I get a bit 
more variety in the water, I can start to pinpoint where I need more color, maybe a little more turquoise here and there, especially on some of the waves. Uh, and there's actually a bit of orange green. <laughs> uh, the sand gets washed up into the waves. So there's actually a fair bit of yellow showing or, or brown sandy tones. So just dry brush over dry brush over dry brush with a huge variety of colors. Uh, that's my strategy. Works pretty well, but like again, it's such a small space that you can only do so much uh, and still capture that kind of loose quality. I do need a few spots of pure white where the waves roll over and they are like foaming. And I just use chunkier marks for those. Um, and I try to space them out. Cause usually that white bit is not like super, well, it sometimes is really long, but I like kind of breaking it up a bit. It just f gives it a bit more action, I suppose. <laughs> so if I load up my brush with white, I'll just dot it in certain areas. Sometimes I go a bit overboard with this part, so I'm trying to like rein it in a little bit, <laughs> especially when I have such a small shoreline or a skinny shoreline. Um, but I'm gonna leave that for now. I can always add more later. Let's go back to the bigger brush. And now I'm squinting at my water again and trying to see the difference in values between the shoreline and like where the water comes up on the, wa the shore and the wet sand that's being reflected. Oops, too much blue, a little more white. Um, but what I find useful is actually, once I kind of know where my reflections are gonna be, I wanna do some of the darker sand because I wanna overlay the light reflections on top of those. Um, but like right now, I kind of just blocked in where I want my highlights to be so I don't forget. <laughs> um, for the darker sand, Actually, let me spray my palette really quick. My eyes hurt a lot when I uh, try to see the color in the shadows because it's such harsh light. So that's why I'm painting in full sun. <laughs> uh, okay, so the dark sand, I'm gonna go with a burnt sienna. I really like that as my, my red when I do beaches because it's a little more earthy, it's more natural looking. My yellow ochre. And a tiny bit of helio turquoise. So now it's like a nice uh, brown that is a little more colorful than just using plain burnt umber. Um, and now I'm gonna tint it towards purple. And I can do that in a few ways. I can um, like grab a little bit of my permanent alizarin crimson and a bit of blue and for blue i try not to use a greenish blue because then it'll just keep going towards brown so for blue i my choices are either uh delft blue or ultramarine and i'll just go with ultramarine because it's reliable and depending on how much blue i add it'll lean towards purple red will make it lean a little towards pink um, but gotta try it out before i really know what i want <laughs> and maybe a tiny bit of white because it's quite dark and vibrant so i'm going to desaturate it with the white and a little more white so right now it's kind of like a grayish lavender tone which is kind of perfect so i'm now squinting at my scene and i'm trying to see where all of that wet sand is and I'm just gonna lay this color in anywhere I see wet sand. 
but a lot of this is going to be covered up with my sand color and my final reflection colors. To capture that sense of like panorama, I'm I'm using this center point as my like not necessarily the focal point, but everything is emanating out from that center point. Because if you think about how a camera takes a, a panorama or a wide angle photo, it kind it's not necessarily this isn't necessarily a fisheye view, but it sort of exaggerates that perspective, and everything like falls away from that center point. Uh, so I can kind of imitate that with, with this just by making everything kind of either go this way on this side or this way on this side. <laughs> so it looks really messy right now, but we still have to add all the sand. Then we can do the, the cliffs and the stuff on the sides and the rocks. So that sandy color, I'm going to go with a burnt sienna again, my yellow ochre and white, like a lot of white maybe a hint of yellow bright yellow because that'll warm it up a bit and let's test that so this will be like my first layer of sand and this is going to be covered up later with a bit more white-ish version so at the moment this is just about getting in that base tone of sand and as you can see, it's overlapping a lot of that dark color I put on already. Um, and I don't want to cover everything I've done, but a fair bit of it. And the more of the original brush strokes I leave showing through, <laughs> that that like, it'll just add to the layered feeling of it um, and the loose quality of it because the more you add and the more you blend things, the, lo the less it's going to feel like that loose, spontaneous quality. Um, and that's really hard to achieve because it's, well, I feel like the tendency is to want to go overboard with detail. <laughs> so if you're trying to like train yourself to be a little bit loose and get that almost spontaneous quality, it's not that you just flail at the painting and you know, like hope it turns out that way it's it's like an actual concentrated effort to not overdo it <laughs> so i think going a little slow actually helps which may seem counterintuitive because you look at a loose painting and you're like wow that's so beautiful and wild and free and it must have taken like two seconds and but most of the time it takes <laughs> longer for me anyway because i make I make more like calculated decisions with every single brush stroke. Okay. Didn't mix enough original sand color, so I have to keep mixing more. <laughs> Which is okay because I have a general like formula for it um, and it does give it a bit of variety, which is always helpful. All right, so we, now we have our base sand tones. Okay, that's dried a little more. And now that it's dried, I can see I wanna add a bit more pink in some spots. So kind of on the edges of the painting. Uh, bringing it towards the center. I mean, the, the darker the sand is, the darker or the brighter the reflections on the sand will feel. But you can't really go too dark with the sand. <laughs> I feel like it's just gonna, um, because in when you squint, it looks quite bright. Uh, but it does depend whether it's dry or whether it's wet. So, you know, you can kind of decide what you want to go with, I guess. Now I can start painting in where my brighter, dry areas of sand are. And by doing, um, I'm going to contrast what I already did and add a bit more yellow where the sand is dry. So
dry brush texture on top of that, what I already put down, uh, is one of my favorite ways to do sand because it just kind of dusts the paint onto the paper. such a fine balance of getting enough paint on the brush and uh, water so that the paint actually moves <laughs> but also allowing like very dry brush textures so I'm always struggling with that but it, it, you know you just got to keep doing it so now I'm going to go in and finalize all of my reflections, but first I need to make my palette clean. <laughs> okay, we're back with some reflections, hopefully. Now I will start to be a little more careful when I place these, because I don't want to have to do it all again. <laughs> Um, I need enough white so that it's, it's opaque on top and, and like doesn't let too much of the under layer show through. So I'm trying to go a little thicker. So I can do like one or two brush strokes and then see how that dries. It's pretty good. The closer the reflections get to me, the darker they are. So I'll add a bit more ultramarine to the ones that are closer to me, like down here. And when that dusts over what I already have on the paper, the sand, so you know, using a dry brush with a bit more ultramarine, it dusts over that sand color and automatically looks a little darker and a little more purple, which is good. That's what I want. And then as it gets farther away from me, I'll add more and more of the white and the brighter blue. And now I'm being very careful about trying not to overdo it, first of all, but also getting some more intentional marks and directional marks that will sort of lead the eye through the painting. Um, also, when you do a lot of dry brushing, it's really helpful to clean your brush off in between like every few brush stroke because it gets clogged up and then it just doesn't move and it's so much easier when you have a nice clean brush to start with so it's a fine balance of you know I dip my brush in the water get it a little bit wet then I pick up the paint and within seconds it's gonna start drying and sometimes to the point where I just can't use it so then I need to do the same thing clean it off pick up more paint it's like an ongoing balance, uh, struggle, I guess. I do apologize if the camera shakes when I mix vigorously. So this is going to be a bit thinner up here. Oh, actually, I need more white paint. I have to say it is the perfect beach day because there's barely any wind. Yeah, it's just cool enough so you're not like dying of heat. And it allows me to paint so much easier because I'm not battling the wind. And I may need to add a bit more wave on the shore. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to do the cliffs in the distance. 
hopefully that'll be easy. Oh my gosh, my paint is dry already. I need to spritz it. Basically, anytime you see your gouache lose its shine, you need to spray it <laughs> because otherwise you're gonna get like a dried skin on top of each color. So just constant, like keep an eye on it. If it starts looking matte in the palette, spray it. Okay, so for the distant hills, I'm gonna start with a brown, so my burnt umber. Uh, but there's a lot of haze in the sky, I guess you'd say. Um, so I'm gonna mix in some of my teal. Let's add some blue, some darker blue, like Delft blue. And I'm gonna start with that base, a nice grayish brown. So this is my burnt umber and Delft blue. Uh, That's way too dark. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white to desaturate it and lighten it a little. Maybe that's good. I'm gonna add more teal actually because it's a nice way to turn it more gray. <laughs> there are some dark blue shadows, like really dark blue on the left side of the hills back there. So I'll do those after I lay this in. But ultimately I want that hill to be just pushed back a little bit more. So I'll continue to desaturate it and make it a little bit more blue. You know, you put a color down, you see how it looks, and then you adjust it, and then you do the same thing over and over again. So for the shadows, I'm just gonna like layer in some ultramarine, just pure ultramarine. There's a lot of like, sloping hills and stuff back there. All right, we're gonna leave that one alone. I hope you can still hear me okay. I might have to adjust the audio in the editing phase because I'm a little further away now. I'm standing up. So this time I'm gonna use slightly lighter and warmer colors, a little bit more saturation. Uh, but first I'm just laying in some I'm blocking in the major shape so I can kind of see what I'm working with. Um, there are a lot of grays in the rocks and there's lots of bright green bushes and even some yellow gorse. I sometimes have different strategies when I'm painting rocks. Uh, in this case, I think what I want to do is lay in my kind of middle tones, just so I know where everything is going to be. I'm concentrating on this foreground. Uh, it does help if you, if you kind of have an idea of how to draw rocks and the, and the overall structure. And if you don't, I have a lot of uh, content out there that can help. <laughs> I have a full like in-depth Skillshare class about that, about rocks. And it's one of my favorite things to draw. Rocks can be extremely intimidating because they're so complex. What I really need to do is lay in some of the greens because it's really hard to figure out the highlights without knowing where all the greens are. So we're gonna go with a olive green, a bit of Delft blue. Black is also a way to desaturate. So if you want to start with more of a neutral green, Mixing black and yellow is a really great place to start, or mixing black into whatever your pre-mixed green is. So this whole top section is covered in grass or bushes. I like to kind of spread the bristles like that. And then when I'm doing the grasses or the bushes or whatever, I get a broken brushstroke.
it just looks a little more organic. Um, but, you know, if you've, you've probably heard me say this a million times, but I really love using like big chunky brush strokes. <laughs> uh, and especially for rocks, I find it works really well. So that's kind of what I'm doing, but I'm trying to get it a little more grassy, I guess, more plant-like. I'm going to use ultramarine, mix ultramarine in, like a lot of ultramarine, and kind of touch it in a little bit here and there because so I'm trying not to get too much shadow on it, but it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, this is just going to be like my grassy shadow color. Just to break it up a little bit. Because it's a lot of just big chunks of green at the moment. And then we're going to add the lighter tones. The highlight of the greens. Actually, we'll do that last. Now that I have the green in, I can see kind of the value structure a little bit better. So I'm going to continue on with adding a bit of uh, highlight to some of the, the rocks. And it's kind of just lots of uh, diagonal brush strokes that's mostly gray. Big cracks and like deeper shadows on the rocks so I still need to do those. And I'm gonna go with like a reddish, actually a more of a purplish tone. So I'm gonna start with a oh, permanent alizarin crimson and then some delft blue. When I'm getting a little confused by the complex structure of rocks, what I'll do is look at my subject for a minute and squint my eyes, and that automatically allows me to start to see some of the bigger shapes. So if I see, if I squint and I see a lot of light area, I know that this whole area is mostly in highlight, and then I can break it up into sections, like after I stare at it for a little while. <laughs> Honestly, I have no... I wish there was a shortcut to just making great rocks and cliffs. But for me, it has just come from a ridiculous amount of observation. But it doesn't have to be like crazy detailed either. You know, you can have a... I've seen paintings that like there's a huge cliff and it's almost just like one or two brush strokes and it looks beautiful. Because in the context of the painting, you just know that it's rocks, it's, you know that it's cliffs. The, the viewer accepts it and you move on. Especially if it's not the focus. I mean, the darker my shadow is, the brighter my rock highlights will seem, so... You know, it's all relative. I'm using very diluted gouache because I, wor I like working in layers, working in glazes. Definitely need some splashes on the edge of these rocks, so I'm using a dry brush. Pull it back. I need a bit more highlight on some of these waves. But we're pretty much done. So, of course, let me know if you enjoyed this, if you, you know, want more, want less of this kind of thing. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up always helps. If you're new here, welcome. Subscribe if you want to see more painting adventures. I definitely had fun with this one. I think I just feel so spoiled with this weather. I kind of wish I had company, but it's also nice to be able to concentrate on this so I could share it with you all. All right, let's take a look at the final result.